Hey everybody, this is my 20 long open topped office tank and in it we have my long fin German blue ram and a bunch of guppies and tonight we're due for a water change. I was thinking about doing one last night but I put it off and when I came in this afternoon I noticed that I've got a dead guppy stuck to the filter intake there that's one of the ones that was really swollen up in the belly I don't know if it was a female that was just bound up and and never released her babies or what but she's no longer with us and stuck to the filter intake so we need to get that taken care of and I checked my videos and the last water change video I did on this tank was 23 days ago so a little over three weeks out now I did do a fairly significant top off uh, not long ago, I put about two inches of water back in it. And so today we're actually going to do the real water change. I'm probably going to clean up the filter. It's running a little slow again. I've got the top off right now because it was vibrating and making some rattling noise the other day. It was kind of annoying me, so I took the top off. And we're going to pull the filter intake out, get that cleaned up. Of course, put new filter pads in and that sort of thing. You know, basic maintenance kind of stuff. But we will be having a look at my temple plant there when we get done all of this and of course we'll have a closer look at all of the fish in the tank we will be doing a nitrate test it's been three weeks it'll be interesting to see how much the nitrates have built up in this tank over a three-week period and of course we can also discuss the uh, future of this tank I've been thinking about maybe making some changes so let me get started on the water change here and you can take this part as your before and there's your after so not a whole lot to talk about. My filter intake was a little more gunged up with stuff than I expected it to be. I think a little bit of it was that white water mold that I was dealing with in this tank before. I never really did anything about it. It just sort of went away on its own. And so if there's still a little bit of it in there, I'm not too worried about it. It's just a matter of doing exactly what I just did. I just sort of pop the filter intake off, take it in the other room and rinse it out in hot water and it's good to go for quite a while so not really too worried about it I'm not gonna stress myself over treating the tank and doing this and doing that and trying to eradicate it um, I've had the white water mold in other tanks before and nothing I ever treated with it I was never able to seem to get rid of it by doing anything intentionally um, but every time I just sort of dealt with it and ignored it it always went away on its own and so why I've got it in this tank I'm not really sure but it only gets in that filter intake on occasion as I'm saying here it's you know it's just not really that big of an issue for me and if you're not familiar with white water mold it is actually a kind of fungus and it grows on plastic it's actually kind of a nuisance in people's swimming pools it gets into the uh, plastic filtration systems and all the pipes and hoses and stuff so the plastic insides of our filters and I'm assuming the sort of clear plastic I guess that's like an ABS plastic or something uh, that's what the water mold tends to want to grow on. I never really noticed it on this black plastic, but it's this white clear plastic is what it will grow on. And then if it, if it gets so much that you've got excess amounts of it that it's breaking loose, uh, it may float around in your tank and it may sheet on the surface of the water a little bit, but it doesn't grow on anything in the tank and it won't get in your tank necessarily um, the way like algae or other things will. So it's not really that big of a deal if you ever happen to run across it. I don't really think it's probably uh, that common in the aquarium hobby, but leave it to me. If it's something you can get in your tank, then I'll get it in there. Um, so again, I just went ahead and did that. I put a new filter on it. My bio sponge was not in need of any kind of cleaning, so we didn't do anything with that either. Um, did a little bit of a gravel vac. I probably should have wiped down the glass both on the inside and the outside, but I didn't bother with that. I did about a 50% water change, and as I said, I gravel vac a little bit. Um, I'm really getting some good, vigorous new growth with my... Um, temple plan here you can see all this root that has not yet found the bottom and is not yet rooted in it's still just sort of free floating but all that root growth is new and it coincided at exactly the same time I put crushed eggshells in there I put four or six eggs worth of eggshells in there and I simultaneously started dosing it with flourish trace elements and trace minerals so it's got a little bit of calcium and magnesium from the eggshells, even a little bit of sulfur from the eggshells. And now I'm giving it a little bit of the 
um, Flourish. This stuff, I'll go ahead and put a link down below if you're interested in that. This is Trace Minerals. It doesn't give you any of the NPK, although I don't really need the nitrates. Um, but the phosphorus and the potassium wouldn't be a bad idea. But at any rate, with the um, Seachem, Flourish, and the eggshells I've got in there, I've actually gone from being almost on the verge of death here. This plant was just a bunch of little twigs and sticks. I've now got all of this nice new green growth. And if you look around carefully, you'll see all those little spots of purple there um, getting flowers all over it again. So we're getting our second wave of flowers since we put this in here. I can look over and say hello in the mirror there. So I'm kind of excited about that. It's pretty healthy from what it looked like before. So this is definitely, um, you know, on the comeback. And it should start getting nice and bushy and growing again. I'm probably going to start getting uh, new growth off of the tips here. Which means we will probably have to start trimming it back at some point in the fairly near future. I don't know. But I'm quite happy about that. Um, I also have to say, on a final note, the other day I noticed I had a couple little baby guppies swimming around in there. They have survived, and I have noticed that I've got two more. And they have survived, so I don't know if we're seeing all four of them now, but as of this afternoon, I still had four babies in there. So there's two right there. Actually, there's three over on this side, and then the fourth one is right there. So we do have some guppies that have survived my German Blue Ram, uh, which I've actually seen in there chasing the guppies around. I've actually got that on video. I didn't know what he was doing at first. I knew he was chasing something, uh, but I didn't know what it was. But eventually I figured out, uh, with the help of some viewers, that he was chasing baby guppies around. So there you go. That's a little bit of a look. Whoops, I almost forgot to look at the nitrates. Surprisingly low. We are looking at this under a 2700K light, so it's going to have a little bit more of an orangey kind of tint to it, or so, you know, it's going to sort of offset it towards the red end of the spectrum a little bit. But even then, you can still see it's orange. We, we haven't even gotten up into the above 40 parts per million, but we're close. We're right on that cusp, and I'm going to go ahead and call that 40 parts per million. Um, it's probably not quite, but it's close enough that we can call that 40 parts per million. So... There you go, once again, you know, not keeping the nitrates really low, but I'm also, for whatever reason, in this tank, they just don't seem to be climbing up that high. I guess it's not very heavily stocked, and with the temple plant in here, uh, that does draw a lot of the nitrates out of the water. A lot of people think that any plant will draw a lot of nitrates out of the water, and they don't. Plants will draw nitrates out of the water, but as far as how much of them, that's going to depend on how fast the plants grow, how much light you provide them, how much other nutrients you provide them, etc. You need a lot of different ingredients for plants to grow fast. And if they're growing fast, they'll draw a lot of nitrates out of the water. If they're not growing fast, you know, if you've got Java in there that just sort of sits and does its thing and gradually gets bigger and bigger, that's not some, you know, huge draw of nitrates out of your tank. But for whatever reason, this tank is tending to stay pretty low. Even after three weeks, we've only got about 40 parts per million or less. And I'm going to knock that up and um, chalk that up rather to this temple plant here, drawing an awful lot of them out of the water. So there you go. There's my latest update on my office tank. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. And don't forget, as I said, this is my... 20 long open topped office tanks. So thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.